In round one, G2 are playing the Church Arsenal bomb site on Clubhouse. Now, the one thing with this bomb site is a lot of teams they like to facilitate the run, and G2 are no different here. As you can see, this is at the end of prep phase. You can see there is only Virtue alone on the site. He has very minimal utility and investment into him to retain the bomb site control. He has Dirt Door barricaded. He has one shield here. He has some feet holes to blue. And that is pretty much it, to be honest. He is definitely a vulnerable point in this defense. Now, what G2 are trying to elicit is that they want a full roam strategy to come out. They want to delay, 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 and their win condition here is time. It's not fighting a full clear. They want the attackers to come and clear out all of these top floor rooms, every single one of them, with the drones, with physical presence. They then want them to do the exact same on the middle floor, and then they want to drop down to the bottom floor. Now, one thing that G2 do that's different to a lot of other teams is G2 have actually reinforced all of the hatches. You can see kitchen hatches reinforced, bar hatches reinforced, and stock hatches reinforced. Now, bar hatch is the main one. Normally, teams will leave bar hatch open to, as a point of rotation. G2 have not done that. G2 have instead elected to bring the castle. Now, as you can see, you've got a castle barricade on kitchen hallway door. You've got a castle barricade on the main stairs. What that means is G2 actually want to use the rotation method of coming from master down the main stairs and then down the main stairs again to get back to site. The other two castles are used to protect the breaches because that's what they want to do. They want to try and delay the breaches as long as possible. That's why you're seeing a Wamai as well. So they want to try and bandit trick and delay the breach onto Jacuzzi. They use the castle barricade to deny that. And then if we go all the way over to CCTV as well, you can see that Blair is not quite there in terms of putting the castle barricade, but there will be a castle barricade here and bandits here. They want to really delay W7M's time in terms of getting in the top floor, getting in the middle floor, and then they want to drop out alive. Now, that's the win condition for G2 is time. As we can see already for W7M, they've gone on straight on to a doka bee. they've gone straight onto a sense so we're already looking at w7m trying to go away from some of the traditional operators that you might bring on this bomb site in terms of trying to do something a little bit fast doka bee facilitates obviously confusion with the calls and also um a noise uh a, a playmaking ability where the the call comes out you can't be on cams your phone is ringing as a defender and you have a choice of giving up critical sound information to the attackers or answering the call and not having a gun up obviously sense facilita facilitates line of sight blocking as well um so we just want to see how w7m play out but it looks like they are aware of this setup from g2 and it looks like they might be trying to do something to make a faster play as we can see kz has got a drone in garage so he is completely going to be aware of these two players we can actually see another drone here which is i believe it's jv's drone um that also sees these two players Julio's drone is left in spawn. Herds is, has died as is expected with the entry fraggers. They're supposed to do the information scouting onto site. And then Volps has got a drone outside of kitchen. So this is also critical information because W7M know, and the reason that Volps is going to spawn here, they know that Dirt Tunnel is soft, which means they can open it up for free should they need it later on in the round. So we'll play this out and see how it goes. As you can see, G2 have got three players up on the top floor, one player on the middle floor, which is Alamo, and then just Virtue alone on site. So the immediate thing to know is obviously Virtue, as the site player, has to be on the has to be on the cams calling out for his team what's going on. Now, obviously, I did speak about that Dokubi. That call is going to go out very, very shortly and basically stop Virtue from doing that. Dokubi creates a panic factor within pro play. As you can see, KZ, he's just making the phone call now. That means Virtue cannot be on site. And as soon as this call comes in, you're going to see Virtue answer his phone so that he can get straight away back on cams to help his teammates out. Because his teammates have the phone ringing, they've just got to continue as normal, but they know that a play has been made. The one thing that this phone call has facilitated is the herd's entryway into the building. Droned out stock, taken lounge. Now, Herds for this team is absolutely the playmaker. And what he's looking to do is find an opening in G2's defense. And I think he's already found it because G2 have a player. As you can see, he's in red, so it's quite hard to see him. G2 have a player in bar. Now, this player's job is to basically hold on to any mid-floor lurk. You can already see that a lurk through strip side is completely countered by two barricades here. However, a lurk through lounge side and through stock, which is what where Herds has come in, which is this way, 
Nothing has been able to stop it. And this is literally the only weak point in G2's defense that Herds has found. Just to note that if G2 were trying to think about stopping this, then they have a castle upstairs. As you can see, this is Blur. Castle has the shotgun, and he could shotgun, shotgun holes into this wall, and then Alamo could hold it. Because if you look at where Alamo is, he's kind of just holding towards the mid door. If he had an angle that was going that way, he could see all the way through and have potentially stopped Herds in his tracks. So as you can see, Herds is now in established in lounge. So he's sliced open G2's defense because he is between three players up on the top floor, one player on the mid floor, and he's found a pocket of space to actually aggress into, into this weak setup on site that G2 have. As the round rolls on, obviously one call has gone out. There is drones going on. Now JV, he's got a drone in sight and he sees Virtue alone in sight. He sees this setup. He knows... Also, and maybe this is slight indiscipline from Virtue, the reason that this shield exists is that you want to aggress onto anybody that comes down blue. This is basically the safest spot for your site player to play. Now, if we look at where Virtue is actually playing, we know Virtue's kind of just... He's kind of ready. He knows the Dokubi calls come. He's seen stuff on cams that isn't affecting any of his teammates. And his sixth sense is kind of coming up. But what Virtue should have done is rotate to here to stop anybody playing down blue because that is absolutely the weakest spot. Doki seems to be aware that there is a player in lounge. He seems to be aware that it's a weak spot. Maybe Virtue saw it also on the drone. They know one's outside garage. So a slight misplay from G2 and maybe even Virtue here just to not get behind that shield. And as we can see, Herds is going to make his way all the way down into blue. Now we pause it there. We can see JV knows exactly where Virtue is, and we're going to expect that Herds will pick up this kill. He walks in sight, picks up this kill. At the same time, Bender has made a play out to go and kill KZ on the construction window. So what do W7M know at this point in time? They know that Arsenal is clear. They don't know actually whether Church is clear, but they know that there is no rotate here into Church from G2. Doki has put shots towards Herds, so they know Doki is in Garage. They know that Benja is outside of the building and they've got a good idea. Well, they know Castle is also top floor because of the drone on prep phase. They've got a good idea Castle is top floor because of the prep phase. That means maximum there is one person on the site here and therefore it is basically a foot race between G2 and W7M to take control of this site now. And that's basically what both teams are going to look to do. You're going to see that Julio immediately tries to get away and get to site. You're going to see that the other players of Volps, uh, sorry, of JV, looks to go into blue, and Volps is just looking to try and catch anybody on the rotation. Because W7M, no. G2 need to try and rotate. But what was their only rotate option? It was through the main stairs here. So that is exactly why Volps has dropped into logistics to try and hold this rotation option away. G2 have obviously will also realize that site is weak, and that's why you're going to see... Doki try and fall all the way back down through garage, and you can see Alamo is already bottom main. So it's basically a foot race to take control of the site because there's very little investment and utility into site. It's a foot race between these two teams to actually get there and do that. As you can see, Alamo goes bottom main, manages to get himself into church. Herds has gone and liked deep in Arsenal, and you've now got this situation where you've got two players here that are both in a foot race to try and take this blue control. Obviously, W7M should be aware that Doki has the fastest rotation away. I did talk about that main stairs rotation. There is also a secondary one, which is down through garage and through oil pit. But obviously, as you can see, it can be cut straight away by the attackers as long as they've got blue control, which they took for free very early round. So both players seem to be aware of each other in this engagement. And as you can see, both players will trade each other completely out. So you've now, again, got exactly the same scenario where these two teams are fighting for this map control of the site very quickly. Now, the team that gets the quickest rotation, as you can see, is W7M. They should be aware that Dirt is free because if Dirt wasn't free, somebody would have challenged KZ from it there. It would be absolutely 400 IQ for a defender to sit in Dirt to expect this double rotation coming in. So they're going to try and take the Arsenal site as quickly as they can. Now... Blur has dropped down because he was up in CCTV side. He's followed Doki's same rotation. Should be aware that Blue is pretty much free, but needs to be cautious just in case there is a player holding him. 
Blair can now play towards Arsenal. He's obviously in... The problem with this is he's not in an advantageous situation because of the fact of the shield and these feet holes. It's very awkward for Blair to try and play blue. Now, Ben Drew is also not in the picture right now. And that's because he's up in bar kind of just waiting around, wondering whether there's anybody lurking on the mid floor, trying to cut his rotation. He's been very cautious about it. And what you've got on site is you've now got a 3v2 scenario about to occur for W7M. As soon as they get themselves through the dirt door, dirt door's open and they will push themselves in. And as you can see, just from the way that Blair's playing it, it's not the most advantageous fight that he's having to take. He's having to prone in. Alamo's had the dirt door and swung it, but Herds, again, the first guy into sight, was completely ready. Alamo tried to swing out and get a free kill here onto the dirt door players, knowing that they would be pushing into sight. Was not aware that Herds had this big cross angle here. Round two, and we can see that G2 have gone for basically the exact same strategy in this round as the previous round. There is only one difference in their lineup, and that is Doki going on these army. So far, he has only thrown one as army keeper barrier, which is not potentially shown in the replay, but is basically blocking a line of sight here. It's so that if G2 try and retake late round and they take into church, they've got something to try and play behind looking towards blue. Now, for W7M, they're going on a, a very similar um, a, a very similar attack you would expect based on this lineup. Julio is not playing a hard breacher whatsoever. Herds this time is on the ace and Volps is going to stay on the sledge. JV on the book. So KZ who was on the Doka beat and JV who was on the sense is now Ayana and book. And we've now introduced a nomad into the lineup as well. So for W7M, it's not going to be... Based on the fact that there's only one breacher, and this is a big indicator on clubhouses, the amount of breaches that teams take will indicate their intentions. Based on the fact that there is only one breacher, this you would expect is W7M going to do some kind of half clear or some kind of direct take. The reason being is that essentially with clubhouse, especially for the basement, you've got hatches times by three. And then you've got church wall that you might want to look to open or dirt tunnel. So you've got plus one breach. Now, obviously, Ace can only open. He has three charges and it takes two to open a hatch. So W7M will be aware that G2 have reinforced all the hatches because they saw the setup last time. As you can see, kitchen hatch is about to be reinforced. So they can they know they can only open one hatch plus one half wall if they only play Ace. I think the reason they've played Ace is just in case Dirt Tunnel is left soft uh, is reinforced. Um, just so that they can open that because it looks like they're going to try and elicit something fast Maybe herds up on the upstairs just to try and open one of the walls and just put some false pressure But the rest of the lineup it looks like they're going to go pretty fast They've also brought the book and the sledge So I wonder whether they saw the soft walls in blue Last time and, w and thought maybe we can explode into church. So we'll have to see Doki's obviously playing these army He's going to play them up into the rafters as well to try and reinforce his uh his setups. Now, as you can see, there's a drone in garage that knows Doki's location is there. Julio's got a drone in strip. Herds has got a drone by the kitchen door there. Volts has got a drone in kitchen. And JV's got a drone in garage. All drones alive. They are aware this is completely, completely the same setup. Doki's going to struggle to find this drone. It's still there. Now, as we can see, three have spawned out towards the kennel side. One has spawned towards Dirt Tunnel. And where is the last player spawned? Duh, 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 duh. Let's just double check this. KZ out towards kennels. Julia, oh, four kennels. Yeah. Four have spawned towards kennel side. One, two, three, four, and then one in Dirt. Now, that Dirt player, you can see already, he's taken that Dirt control. He wants Dirt fast. He knows that G2 left the Dirt door closed last time. It is exactly the same setup as we've seen from G2. The same feet holes, the same shield for Virtue. Um, obviously needs to be careful not to get caught again. So we'll see how this one plays out. And as we can see, that fast entry again. Herds has actually thrown an ace charge as well. Let's just go back and see where Herds threw the ace charge. I think he might have thrown it straight onto one of the panels somewhere in Garage. Just to open up below Doki. Let's see where he throws it. Maybe he throws it. Oh, he throws it on a window. So, 
we saw that the Doka B play last time was to create the sound. Hurge throws the ace charge on the window to create some sound going on there as he makes his way in through strip. And as you can see, Volps has already gone into that. He knows it was soft last last time. JV has already entered into blue. They know it was completely free last time. So this is W7M knowing what the strat is from G2 and then playing into that same weak spot that was in terms of lounge and this um, Adam stairs going down into blue. This time though, W7M are actually going to look to hit Virtue because Virtue should be ready for it, but they're going to look to hit Virtue from two angles at the same time. They've got a good awareness that he's probably in and around the same area. If it was me or if it was, you know, a lot of teams, they would be expecting him to be behind this shield again. Virtue's playing basically the same location. So I would expect that this first engagement is going to come on to Virtue pretty fast. And as you can see, two players straight away close to Virtue. A third player goes in Adam, but this player of KZ, he's just going to lurk and hold hold the flank there for any player that runs down red will run straight into his waiting arms. Now, nobody's on cams, as you can see. They're making challenges. But if there was somebody on cams, then you would be holding the garage cam, this cam here, so that you know that Doki cannot rotate down catwalk. Um... And that is basically the only cam you would actually be holding, to be honest, because you've got the add-on flank covered and you've got two people making the play straight into Virtue. As you can see, Virtue, again, kind of seems aware that somebody might be challenging him. And now there's three. And this is where this book comes into play because the blue players were not necessarily looking to challenge Virtue too much. They were looking, and this is why they brought Sledge and Book, to make a play straight into church. They'd seen that this wall was completely soft last time. They couldn't get through it because they had no means to. Now, JV has the means to. Virtue actually finds the first kill onto JV. Gives away his location. Now, this is where W7M XL. You would expect Virtue to be almost immediately refragged. Sight is taken by both the Sledge and the Ayana. At this point, G2 have no clue who is in sight. But they do know that site is being hit fast. So what this causes is the ripple effect of Alamo having given up his position on the mid floor to take a position on in the basement. We would expect to see Doki at some point doing that same rotation down through church. However, he should now be caught on the camp because JV is dead, can sit on that flank camp. And you're going to see Blair's already dropped to the mid floor to try and retake Alamo's location. And Benja's looking the same kind of thing. So G2 have already given up basically top floor because of this site pressure. Herds finds a kill. Sorry, KZ finds a kill onto Alamo. Just to be honest, he's looking for if Virtue tries to rotate back into Arsenal. So he finds one kill. And he's actually going to pick up the second. Oh no, he doesn't pick up the second. Sees the player bottom main. So W7M now no. One player was seen church double door. They know one player has gone bottom main. So they have an idea two are probably in church. And as you can see, Volps is now looking through towards church. Virtue has swung round towards KZ. Virtue picks up that kill. So they know where Virtue is and they know that church player exists. And this is just pure refragging from W7M. They've traded this back out to a 3v3 scenario. They know that a guy was in church. They may or may not have realized in the moment that Church has now been opened by JV and that Benja, and he's actually played this very smartly, has tried to retake in because he's tried to wrap around to get this kill. This round pretty much, if we look at where this round is going, determines on who gets this kill will win this round. As we can see, Doki has made the play down into Garage. Blur has taken the route to make the play down into Blue. Now, this is probably the biggest mistake G2 have done in this round. I think Blair should be looking to try and get himself down the main stairs. Because as we know, fighting outside in, we saw it in the last round, fighting outside in from here into church or into armory is going to be very, very difficult to do, especially with the presence of these feet holes and this shield. So obviously, as you can see, Volps is in a very advantageous position to the point where he can see the feet here, but the feet can't see him. If we look at Volps's point of view, he can see Benja's feet. What can Benja see? Very, very little. He pretty much has to be looking through the top <laughs> the top of that hole just to see a foot. Um, 
And I think that's the biggest problem that G2 have got is Doki is obviously going to be rotating outside of... He's going to be rotate, rotating through garage and you're going to see Blair try and rotate down Adam's stairs. Blair is obviously caught on a drone and Julio has actually played very smartly because Julio started off um, just on drones for his team. He's going to be holding that rotation from the outside. So as Doki's not careful, Julio will get a freebie. And the same with Herds. Herds has kind of lurked in to try and cut the rotate of main stairs. So this is completely advantageous to W7M. And at this point, oh, Julio's caught an awful timing. I don't know what's happened there, but I guess his, uh, his Nomad Trap has gone off by the presence of Blur <laughs> being in Adam. And he's completely let go. He's completely let go of the flank for Doki. So it's an awful it's an awful timing. At the same time, Volps has won his fight out on the armory side. So it's 3v2, advantage to W7M. They also are aware completely of Doki's rotation and completely of Blair's rotation. So they know two players are coming for blue. So what you should see is now Herds making a beeline for the main stairs. And where is Diffuser? Now that is the big question. Diffuser is probably dropped on JV's body. Yeah. So they know that they've got to play for kills, but it's all on Herds getting down. Ideally, if he can get down the main stairs, he can basically aggress through Moto and try and cut this rotate and try and cut this rotate back. So as you can see, the G2 players are going to make a play down onto the basement. Herds gets all the way to bottom main, gets himself into Moto. Now that's the most important thing that Herds can do is get himself into Moto. Finds that freebie onto Doki. And as you say, oh, as I say, they're fighting outside in. In terms of G2, they keep putting themselves in a position where they're fighting from this position in blue back into sight. Now, there's two angles that Blair's got to worry about. And what he probably doesn't know is that Julio's going to come in behind him and then pick up the freebie. Great pacing again from W7M. Great understanding of the G2 strategy, of the weak points in it. And they hit it hard for the second time. Round three. Now G2 have taken two L's on the Church Arsenal bomb site, which is supposed to be the best defender bomb site in Clubhouse. So they decide that they're going to go to what is considered the worst bomb site in Clubhouse, Cash and CCTV. Now the normal thing to do with Cash and CCTV, and G2 are running a fairly default hole here. Four garage walls reinforced because garage is your stronghold that you want to hold on to for as long as possible. You know that it's probably going to get taken from you at some point. But literally on this defense, every single second matters. So as much as you can stay alive, you try and facilitate that. Now, four reinforcements, two ADSs, another reinforcement on the top garage that cuts any lines of sight from the breach through, which means a player can play between panel one and panel two for free. So this is kind of the, the end zone of where players can play. It's kind of there for free. And that's where somebody will play. I'm assuming based on the lineups, that's probably going to be either Alamo or Virtue. They may even double up. Now, if we look at G2's lineup, they've brought Virtue on the lesion, particularly to stop any shield play. What teams try and do is they try and bring a shield, walk their way up garage, and basically bully this player, this player that is playing between these two, with the shield, they either try and bully him towards the shield, where a player can peek him, or away from the shield, where somebody can peek him from the breach. And that is exactly the reason that Virtue has brought Legion is to stop any Monty play, particularly Montaigne play, in the garage. As we can see, Julio is on the Monty. So that's a keen interaction that we're going to look out for. Now, Doki has brought K to try and keep the breach tricked. Benjamas has brought Mozzie. Now, this, this operator in this kind of setup um, is probably very flexible in terms of what they want to do. The drone work may be, you know, the mozzie pass can be set up to try and take away drones from garage. You know, if there's one garage door, one garage drone hole, another garage door. It makes it very difficult for the attackers to get a picture of what's going on. Most teams, and I would probably side with them, wouldn't have a mozzie in this lineup. I would probably have looked to try and get an Azami into this lineup, if at all possible. One thing you could also have played here would be the Solace. Because obviously, the one thing about this bomb site in particular is any plant spot is obviously, as you can see, all of this is soft floor. Anywhere you can plant on this bomb site 
is all soft floor. So that means vertical play from below is actually a really good idea. So not so keen with the mozzie pickup. Do understand the Cade, understand the Legion, understand the Jaeger. Now the reason that you'd prick, uh, pick a doc in this lineup is particularly an, another old fashioned way of taking the garage rafters control is for the attackers to get themselves into this kind of position with nades you double flash up and you nade out any players you could also use capital to just fireball it so the g2 have brought redundancy in both legion and dock to deal with the various ways of taking garage obviously if the capital bots come in or a nade come in the dock can just stim themselves back up overheal themselves whatever it may be um and if that happens obviously even if the dock is then down but not out you've got a big long angle to hold anybody pushing up the stairs to kill him so g2's lineup for the most part makes sense maybe apart from the mozzie that could be in his army so they've obviously reinforced garage the main breach of site wall is reinforced and top red now the only place that this gets really different is going to be the fact that the construction wall which you normally see reinforced here has not been reinforced instead you can see it's going to be out towards the jacuzzi breach out towards gym now that indicates that g2 are going to look to try and hold on to the map control of master bedroom you can see they've already got lines of sight into logistics should a player drop down as well so g2 want to hold on to a little bit more map control that's considered default but to be honest their main fight based on the attacker lineup is going to be with julio and the guys that are looking to take garage again we're going to see that this is a little bit more default from w7m we've got two breaches we've got the ace and the fair mate now the ace's job which could have been habana as well but the ace's job is going to be to breach this panel in garage and what that gives you is the top rafters so you get an angle all the way if you're stood here you get an angle all the way through to this spot and then to breach bottom garage here the Fermite's job, and it can be Ace or Fermite, it's kind of interchangeable, but it's much better to have a big breach here. The Fermite's job is to breach the main side, and that would be considered fairly default in terms of the take. Now, if W7M were going to go for the secondary take of this site, that's where you come from master side across. You still need to breach the main breach as a kind of number one, and then you need to breach a com wall as number two, but obviously the con wall is left soft. So I would expect, especially with this lineup showing the Monty, that W7M are going to go directly for the garage default take. So it's going to be interesting from G2 to see who ends up in garage. As you can see, four players have spawned out towards kennels, with only one player that spawned towards bar. So based on the fact that all five players... Are on the east side of the building I would assume that this is going to be garage and the <laughs> is going to be garage and um, the breach taken straight away Thatcher is on the board uh, sorry Thatcher is not on the board um, so it cannot be used so W7M needs to figure out a way to get around the Cade Claw that Doki presents and as we can see it's going to be Virtue that's used straight away getting himself into into garage there and using the legion goo mines to try and delay the monty basically fire is outside the breach and this is the big problem for w7m is how do they clear these cade claws doki has only got one and as you can see he sat waiting to trick it the cade claw is actually on the breach so there's a few methods that teams can use one of them is a nade from the window across and that's why you see this ADS. Or you can go underneath and nade upwards. Now, obviously, with Cade, it's a bit trickier to do that because you don't know where the claws can be located. Particularly on this wall, where you can put a claw inside of the top red bit, you can put it inside of the monitors. It's very hard to see vertically upwards where these claws are going to be. Um, obviously, if you have pocket EMPs, which W7M do not, it can be worthwhile to just use the pocket EMPs. But Doki is going to look to keep this breach closed. And if we look at the rest of the lineup from W7M, you've got Nayana going to open this window. So it looks like it's going to be the nade setup. Julio's droning out garage because he knows that's where he wants to be. Now, this is the big one, is herds. This is the big variable in this lineup. This is all very, very, very default from W7M so far. But herds on his own is on the Nook operator. Now, obviously, Nook cannot be seen by 
cannot be seen by cameras by any kind of intel once when the gadget is activated it's obviously very quiet and that is why benjo is now playing below and that is why these doors are barricaded because they know that a lark is kind of coming in this is kind of the same as that church the church rounds where alamo is controlling bar if we look at where benjo is he's holding and these holes should have been there the last two times that g2 played the church site but benjo is holding towards stock and he is also going to have full sound information if we look at anywhere where he could be aggressed from there's going to be full sound information for him that there is an attacker coming in as you can see there's a drone that is holding bar as well i don't actually believe anybody's on the drone julio isn't no so this fight between herds and benja it might not happen yet but it is absolutely coming at some point is julio still on these drones he's just joining garage so it's going to be a self drone here for herds he knows that um benja exists there and he's actually he's now not going to sneak around he's going to try and fake presence so again and it's kind of both players have been aware of this is what herds wants to do now is to put a lot of sound in now he has been known the drone has been seen he cannot backstab anymore he needs to make sound and draw attention and then get out of there and that's exactly what he did you can see benja's attention is drawn and also blair's attention is drawn g2 are trying to make a double play onto him and trying to hold angles for each other but herds has just made the attention and got the hell out of there which i think is a really smart play at this point the fairmate is obviously still waiting for the breach now this is where this fight is now oncoming because you want to nade out towards to get the k claw off i don't know if they know about the ads but a nade has absolutely been pulled by kz as you can see he prones doki's ready for it the ads just goes off and catches it you would expect at this point doki to now swing out with this gun to try and pick up this kill and he'll do just that i think that's w7m not doing their full due diligence realistically on their first win condition so now kz has died they've only got herds as nades to go off the ads by the time herds gets there will reset so they still need to find a way to reset the nades and you've got a fermite outside the breach basically not being able to do too much jv drops tries to make a bit of a hero play and does make a bit of a hero play finds a kill back at least very very risky on the breacher let's bear in mind that he's still got his hard breach utility all three of them and nothing in garage has been breached that is a very risky play for jv to make should get punished does get punished virtue makes a play back in towards jv one thing that we didn't quite see is that the second nade actually did get thrown by kz he managed to get it off before he uh before he died so he just tossed it in that got the k claw off the wall which actually means the thermite can open the wall and it looks like he will but doki was also aware of that and threw a k claw right back on if we look from the point of view of doki got a k claw back on in the same position so let's just rewind that and double check it so the first K claw was on, and we'll watch this whole scenario. Because this is how it's still alive. Has cloned for the window. So G2 are going to be very aware that this is happening. The clone gets shot. He'll hear the nade pull in a second. Here's the nade pull. Knows he has an ADS. Second one just gets thrown. So you can see the second one just thrown there from KZ. First one gets caught. Just throw the second one. Doesn't matter about cooking it. Doki gets the kill. Turns around and throws another. This is great play by Doki. That there is great play that keeps the wall closed. Because as much as this hero play comes on from JV, he keeps the wall closed and that's the biggest thing. JV gets a one for one, gets traded back out. So that's one breach dead. And then one breacher gets tricked. So they have one Fermite charge to work off of. And they've not basically done step one. But W7M are going to start trying to play step two. Step two is Julio walking into garage to try and clear Virtue. And again, it's kind of panic stations for W7M. Their backstab has not worked. Their first clear in terms of clearing the CCTV breach and opening that has not worked. They've got to figure out a plan double time. So that first plan is going to be somebody just lurking into gym, as you can see. That player will be Volps. 
He's just gone into gym and he's just going to hold. This is not this is natural line of sight. It's just the replay not showing that it is. And they're going to try and force it in from the other direction now. But again, another problem they're going to run into on that other side is that they've got no soft breach utility. And actually, they didn't bring any. But even if they get control of master bedroom, even if they get control of construction, they've still got to try and get through this breach with no way of actually breaching that wall other than just shooting it open. Herds has tried lurking into stock, found himself a gunfight. Oh yeah, Benja, he's still in bar. He's still holding on to that. And actually G2 have the numbers advantage to make a play together, which is what Blair was trying to do, but Benja takes the peek and gets the kill anyway. And again, it's just about for W7M. They're just trying to recover the round completely. Finds one back onto Benja, but that is literally it. And they're now trying to force a 2v through. They know that the players are going to be over on this side. A G2 can just assume crossfire positions and play this one out. Um, and I think for W7M, this is maybe a variation away from just doing a default. Had W7M had brought anybody other than a Nook here, they would have been able to open this wall pretty easily then from opening that wall pretty easily they would have been able to um they would have been able to squeeze this garage guy out using the monty which was completely their plan and it all fell apart when they couldn't open the basic uh, cctv server wall as you can see obviously there's the monty trying to make a play in and i think they do end up getting into site here but g2 they've got great crossfire positions because as you can see your garage player takes the first engagement. When that happens, your top red player swings out and you've got a perfect crossfire on here. And also, this player can go to here and has a line of sight through. So, if we go on to Volps' POV, he's fighting this position. He is completely not aware of the position coming from Blair on his left. But I do think Blair, for, you know, for what it's worth, is playing it a little bit passively to let him walk in. As it is, the Fermite has not fully walked him. Now the Monty's gone in front of him, the Fermite can take a straight one-for-one -one fight with the Legion. That triggers Doki to look through the holes. That triggers the movement. Blair, as we say, he was playing it passively and has actually gone and just completely left. Not sure what his play is, just to, I think, other than just to get out the way of the Monty and try and isolate the 2v1 gunfight on site. That's exactly what happens. Obviously, Julio is now just by himself as a monty he's got to try and find some kills does some ads in does pick up the do uh, does pick up doki tries to smoke and plant in the smoke now time is very low he's got to plant or find fights he just plants in his smoke gets off it faces an impact and in the end gets knifed away and that will be the round and i think for this round honestly it all comes down to the fact w7m couldn't do that default first step in this take and this is what we say about clubhouse being the one two threes if you can do the one, if you can't do the one, you're not doing the two or the three. You've got to be able to do the first step, then the second step, then the third step. And as long as you can do that properly, you will win your attacks on Clubhouse. W7M didn't do that. This was a very attackable round for them, um, and they didn't achieve it. Round four, we've got the Church and Arsenal bombsite. But notice anything different? Because I do. I notice... In the bomb site, there are four people. Now, previous two rounds that G2 ran on this site, they roamed up on the top floor. So it's worth us looking straight away what is being used on the top floor. We can see there are no reinforcements on the jacuzzi side. There is no castle. Even on the lineup, there is no castle. There is nothing out on the CCTV side. There's nobody playing in rafters. There's nobody um, realistically playing in the middle floor. G2 have changed their strategy. They're going for a complete turtle strategy rather than a roaming strategy, which is in the macro game. That's W7M winning this because they forced G2 off their preferred strategy. They tried twice and they forced them onto their secondary strategy to try it again. Now let's look at the players. You've got Doki who's playing on the Azami. He has already put that same Azami keeper barrier that he did last time. It's not been shown on the replay for some reason and that will be there. We've actually got a more default lineup of reinforcements. We've got a blue reinforcement with a rotate into blue, a rotate into and out of Arsenal as well. The same shield that's being placed, and that tunnel, as you can see, is reinforced. And again, G2 are playing for the title. We can now see they've got impacts on hand of Alamal. 
They've got Cade to try and keep the hatches close. They've got Goyo to try and deny the late round and also any kind of pushes or solo play. Basically just control general areas. They're going to sit on site and then they're going to sit behind. They've also got impacts on Doki as well. And they're going to sit behind the utility and just take a lot of time and just try and make it very hard for W7M to work the site. In, in return for this, because they're trying to do that, they're giving up such big map control. But as you can see, W7M, they weren't interested in taking it anyway. Now, JV's back on the sense. So we're looking at, we've got a sense and a lion coming in again. Um, however, this time, Julio and Herds are going to play Breachers, which looks like they want to do some kind of full clear. The fact that they're bringing a Maverick shows that they want to clear this Moto Hatch with the Maverick. As you can see, there there is a Cade possibility in play. We don't know if W7M know that there's a Cade yet, but because of the possibility of Cade, if they know that they want to clear this Moto Hatch and end up in Church, then they need to bring the Maverick to make sure that definitely happens. Or the EMP grenades, which obviously are not, you know, necessarily always going to hit with Cade Claws, given the range of them. And then obviously you've got the sledge of bolts as well. What do they know in terms of the drones? One in garage. And you can see they already know there's no roam going on. One in spawn. One in... Where is that? One outside the kitchen hallway door. One outside the kitchen door. And then one drone in garage. So W7M completely know this is not a roam setup and that they can completely just go in, take the map control as long as they're thorough. They also know if they're still on the drones. I don't think they are, but they would know that there is only one player that's playing upstairs. That player will be Alamal. But they would know that he has gone downstairs as well. And it's very common to see this as well. You can take certain assumptions... And a certain assumption that the team will take is that if they know that there is a turtle set up, they will know that there will probably be four players in and around the site, maybe in, you know, focused up in dirt tunnel, focused up in blue, one in site, one in church. That's kind of how you would split your four. And then your fifth player is going to be around main stairs to try and shoot drones and fall back. And that is pretty much exactly what G2 are doing. So where's the initial ground that's going to get taken? We don't fully know yet. W7M have obviously just spawned in. It's only been 10 seconds or so. Straight into garage. Shoot the cam. Garage control established for W7M. It looks like they may not even bother with the top floor. Taking an assumption. As we can see, Julio is actually going to drone it and just double check it, I believe. But I don't think anybody will go in the top floor. You've got to do your due diligence. Can't say that, sorry. Um, you've got to do your due dil. Can't say it. Um, but just make sure that the top floor control is yours. And as you can see, this pace from W7M is deadly already. Blue Hatch has been opened with Habana already. And as you can see, the Cade Claw is on the Bar Hatch. So this is going to be a lot of droning from W7M. They've got the initial map control. They control two of the flanks, as you can see. The Lion here of KZ has got one drone in Oil Pit. And he's got physical presence in Adam. So that's two of the flanks established. Now, all it does is de it determines where you want to end up, determines what you're going to do in terms of kitchen and playing vertical and everything else there. Obviously, if you're going to do a kitchen and a dirt take, then you would have somebody posted up on this door, whether that be from chains or physically stood on the door, just to hold the flank and the main stairs. But G2 cannot really flank. They know that. Everybody knows that. It's not something they should really do. And this cat and mouse game of can kitchen hatch be opened is about to be played so we've got doki and we've got alamal now the interesting thing for g2 is their impact nades are nowhere near the hatch which means this hatch can be opened for free and it looks like it's going to be too late maybe maybe not i was about to say it looks like it's going to be too late for g2 to open it doesn't look like it and you can see they rotate fast there's now it's like they're in an actual race to try and open uh to try and impact trick this hatch Obviously, impacts will destroy the Havana pellets without destroying the hatch. Four Havana pellets opens one hatch. Three have gone off so far. And it's a complete cat and mouse game. Now, the one necessarily, the one unexpected item here is the fact that Virtue had a Cade Claw in hand as well. So G2 focused all three people on trying to deny this hatch. Cade Claw has gone on as well. Gets the, Habana, uh, gets the Habana charges. So Habana's now left with four that have been used to open this hatch. Six have been attempted. 
So Habana has at least eight left in terms of the breaching. But this is a big determination on why W7N end up. Because this hatch has been struggled to be opened, they might lose potentially another four pellets because Alamos can still impact trick twice. Two times two impacts, obviously equals four. Um, that would mean that unless Julio fancies Maverick in a hole in Dirt Tunnel, the Dirt Tunnel will stay closed. If Dirt Tunnel stays closed, it's very, very hard to actually drop this hatch due to the presence of the Kiba Barry here and a player here because they're just going to catch you when you drop. So because of all this all this attention from G2 onto this hatch, this means that W7M probably are going to have to change approach, go for the Moto hatch, and go into church whichever way they can. And it looks like that's going to happen. As you can see, Herds has just completely left the um, kitchen hatch. Oh no, he's actually going to try and still open it. Puts one pellet next to the kitchen hatch. Does nothing, but does get rid of the Cade Claw. And he's going to try another two pellets. So this hatch is absolutely going to be opened. Unless Alamo can impact trick. Can he get there in time? Doesn't look like it. G2 don't look like they're interested. They feel that they've got enough value. Oh! Virtue makes a massive play. Virtue makes a massive play to shoot. Let's just go back. To actually shoot... The Habana pellets off the hatch. So Herds now has, I believe, four pellets. And now I believe maybe two pellets. Will another impact come in? Maybe, maybe not. Volps is obviously doing his best to try and protect these ones. Hatch is opened. Now KZ has found a play in blue. He's found a play blue lurking down. All the while this is going on. And let's not forget that this hatch mini game has had the attention of Doki, Virtue, and Alamal. Now, these three players coordinating in sync will have absolutely cluttered the comms, and I think KZ has just caught an unreal timing here to actually just walk his way down. He's seen he's seen Benja just sat holding him. There is a drone. I don't think anybody's holding it for him because of the presence of where everybody else is. Oh, yes, JV. JV, we've seen it again. Has been very good on these drones. Now, this isn't JV's drone. It's KZ's drone. But, as soon as anybody needs a drone hold in, JV is absolutely there to hold the drone. KZ walks down, gets the wall bang, gets himself away. All the while, Julio, whilst all of this has been going on, Julio has been opening the moto hatch. So, actually, W7M now have a lot of options. They've got two hatches open. If they really wanted to, they could actually open Dirt Tunnel. Because one thing that I did admit is the fact that JV is running the hard breach can openers as well. So, we've got to see where W7M want to end up. But they've got full map control. They've got a minute to play with. And they've taken and killed one guy in blue. So, they've got numbers advantage as well. Two players are in church. Two players are in Arsenal. So, essentially, whichever way W7M slice and dice it, they've got the opportunity to hit one of the sites with a numbers advantage. Now, during all of this fiasco as well... The Azami of Doki has reinforced off mid-round this rotate, which means he wants nothing to do with blue. This is exactly what afforded KZ the opportunity to walk down without fear that there was anybody here and will afford him the opportunity to walk down again. So even if, even if W7M look to hit the church side, KZ can walk down and try and cut basically all of this, this big long line of sight from where he is, and try and hold these two players. So if W7M really wanted, they could identify a 4v2 onto the church side. And likewise, you know, the other way around, if they want to identify even, you know, they get somebody main stairs, they can now get a 4v2 onto this side. W7M are in a great position here because of G2's decision making and because KZ found a, a very good first kill. So now we'll see where the players are going to go. You've got one on Kitchen Hatch. You've got one on Moto Hatch. You've got one on Blue Hatch. So one player is going to be on each of the hatches. Now, one thing that we've not yet spoke about is the fact that there are lots of... <coughs> excuse me. There are lots of flash on W7M. 
These flashes are going to be important because they're going to start being spammed alongside the light walls. Now, the sense light walls from JV aren't shown. They don't get shown on the replay. But what we can do is track the steps. It kind of does get shown that. Oh, it does. There we go. So the light wall goes off here. And as you can see, KZ has used all of his flashes. These flashes are also going to be spammed at some point as well. Now, there's two points of distraction here. There's flashes down the hatch here. So these guys are completely flashed. Don't really know what's going on. And then there's the sense wall here, which forces Doki, as you can see the rotation, into here. So you've got fire going off, fire going off, perceived attention here, perceived attention here. And in the meanwhile, where's the diffuser? The diffuser has walked down the main stairs and gone into back arsenal. This is great by W7M. And we're going to slow this down just to show it again. There's a sound bug because of this. I'm just going to turn this very slightly down. So sorry about that sound bug. Actually, I'm going to turn it completely down. So, in hand very shortly will be JV throwing the throwing the light wall. That's coming in now. KZ is throwing the flashbangs. You can see the flashbangs are actually going off here because he's throwing them from the hatch. Light wall comes out. Doki makes the play in. At the same time, one is church. He makes play in. He's flashed. He's flashed. Big opportunity. And that is exactly what W7M exploit. At the same time as this is all going on, KZ drops after the flashes. And what W7M want is they want the mayhem to happen so that the plant goes down because they can hold the plant from above as soon as that happens. They've gone for an off spot. This pillar spot is not too well known about, or not too, it is well known about, it's not used as much as teams, you know, as W7M did here. It's not frequently used. KZ walks down blue, finds that first kill onto Virtue. There is absolutely nothing these church players can do because Doki reinforced off that wall. He was feeling too much heat from the side of KZ. Julio. Holding from the hatch, again, has spammed two of his flashes. Gets the kill onto Blur. And that 4v2 that got established, KZ picks up one, Julio picks up one. These guys church door. Like I say, as soon as you've got a player that can hold the main stairs like, like Herds is, can hold that long angle all the way across. All the way across here. They can do nothing. Plant goes down. They can't really swing out. Volps gets off the plant and swings one. And they know the last guy's in church. KZ kills him. This round and this execute from W7M start to finish is absolutely incredible from them. By using two methods of distraction, one and two, they created a point of engagement here and a plant here. Very, very, very nice stuff from W7M. A great execute. They've now beat G2's primary defense on this bomb site and their secondary defense on this bomb site. Round five. Now, G2 have lost Church Arsenal three times to W7M, but won Cash JCTV. And realistically, had W7M have attacked that properly, G2 would be 4 0 down in the first map of the grand final at this point. They've had to change site and they've gone to gym and bedroom. Now, from initial looks, this is a very default gym and bedroom where they're looking to extend out towards the east side of the map and also vertically below. As you can see, there is no castle, there is no bandit, there is no Jaeger. These are the usual operators that you would use to try and keep hold of the walls and just consolidate on the top floor. Because there are none of that, G2 are actually going to try and play below as well. So if we look at where the walls are going to be, there's still two pocket walls that are going to come in. One of them that you would expect is going to be used for logistics. So there's two walls to gym. Boom, boom. Two, one wall to bathroom one wall to the gym site with a lot of holes and two rotates in that wall 
There's a rotate in the vault. And as you can see, logistics is currently left soft. You would expect that at some point there'll be a rotate here and a reinforcement here, like that. I rotate to top red over on CCTV and also the CCTV walls are reinforced as well. Now, what's different from normal is you two have chose to close off this wall and play a rotate in this wall. This is the same exact setup that we saw when G2 defended catch CCTV. And what this means it, there's, is that there's going to be a player stood inside of garage. So should W7M come from the top down and they come from the east across, what they need to figure out, because they will breach this wall, but they can't just walk in here because there's a shield there with a player behind and there'll be a player playing here that have a crossfire alongside a third player that could be playing in cash. So that's what W7M would need to unlock and figure out. And that's why you're also seeing Alibi. Benja's got a really important role in this, or whoever plays below has got a very important role because they need to try and hold on to bottom garage and stop this garage player dying. You would expect that the garage player is either going to be Doki on his army or Virtue on the Wamai. And that's the key win condition for G2 is if it's an East take... Can they hold on to, for as long as possible, cash, CCTV, garage, and construction? If it's a west side only take, or some kind of like through the below, can they hold on to that as well and rotate quickly enough? For W7M, they're bringing out a, a plethora of different operators actually here. We're seeing KZ on the Flores. Flores is a great pick on this site always because there's usually a couple of shields. There's usually frost maps. There's usually stuff that they need to think about and deal with. Julio's bringing Capital. That indicates, probably, that they know about the fact that there's going to be a player in Catwalk. Herds is bringing the Ash. Volps is bringing the Book. And JV is bringing the Maverick. So, they're just bypassing the fact that G2 are bringing Cade every single round. So, they're just going to play the Maverick for the breaching, which is very common that we see on Clubhouse. So, let's see how this one plays out. Now, in terms of spawns, we've got one guy has spawned up towards construction. Uh, yeah. Nobody has spawned over by kennels. Three players have spawned over by the west side. And then one player down here is going to spawn by bar. As you can see, that player of Flores, you would expect KZ is going to get one of the windows or a couple of the windows open straight away. And that is exactly what he's going to do if we ignore the fact that the sight is floating around the gun. That's a weird bug. So, immediately, it looks like W7M are just going to ignore and forfeit all of this control. As we can see, it is actually Virtue that's going to be playing inside of here. And then they're going to look to just squeeze the site itself. So, it's important, it's actually imperative for G2 that they get people downstairs to, re to support Benja. I said he was going to have uh, a big role to play because he is currently on his own and it looks like there are people coming across from him outside of stock. He's just about to get drowned. Now, for W7M, they don't... Oh, he's been misdrowned. For W7M, they don't actually need to be taking any of this ground. The reason that you would take this ground, predominantly, is so that you can vertically nade and clear these people out of sight. W7M are playing zero nades. So, if their idea is to establish another point of entrance in through the main stairs alongside the breach, that may be it, but... It's a lot of droning, it's a lot of clearing, and as you can see, they've not fully checked Benja. Will this cost them? We don't yet know. Julio has looked to try and establish himself into bar, and obviously Benja has got his spidey senses a tingling. He's run out, and he's going to go and try and get himself in kitchen hallway. No, he's not. He's going to get himself back into stock. So these players seem acutely aware of each other at this point, and a fight's going to ensue, and Benja will drop away for the time being. But where does Benji drop away to? He drops away to the main stairs. Which means Julio has to double check, see exactly where he's gone, take a lot of time. And Benji's played this pretty smartly to try and take that ground. At the same time, what else is going on? We've got the Maverick that is going to try and open the jacuzzi wall. And that's pretty much it from W7M. It's There's not too much going on right now. You've got the Flores that's going to try and take utility away from the roof through the windows using the Flores drones. So W7M are kind of just poking and prodding and seeing what what sticks, what information they can get, and what 
or I would say opportunities exist for them to make the plays. G2 have completely overreacted on the fact that W7M have gone below. And I say overreacted, they needed to help Benja. They don't obviously know that there aren't free nade operators here. So they've tried to completely take this ground and that's right, it's completely right. They should fully, in theory, abandon this setup. And they should also, in theory, not be sat inside of sight. Because G2's assumption at this point is W7M, they're going to hit Jacuzzi, they're going to hit this breach straight away after they've got people in to start nading some of these common positions out in all these kind of positions. Nade all these common positions out. So G2 want to reinforce and secure the middle floor underneath sight. Julio again is kind of on a solo lurk and this is probably W7M's problem is they've not read into this. They might have fully still considered that G2 is still playing garage, are still playing cash, construction, logistics, site, when in reality there is no G2 players on site whatsoever. And if W7M get a read into that, they can maybe hit the site quickly. And it's all about who gets this read first. G2 having cleared physically with all of their players that there is not three people below nading up, realize that they may have got the read wrong and get themselves up. Get themselves back up to site and secure themselves in it. They can now sit in site for free. And as you can see, this is why they gravitate back to site. They're not worried about the nades from below anymore. So they can actually take up these types of positions inside of site. Again, Julio has been very patient, but Benja has also been very patient. This... This first engagement between these two <laughs> that sparked this off is still not concluded. But G2 have got themselves back to site and they've completely left the east side. The east side of the building is just not relevant at all whatsoever. Which means, actually, because the east side of the building is not relevant, KZ's making a massive assumption that he can play on Windows, but it's currently a correct assumption. The reason that the he's made that assumption with the east side being relevant is because nobody is going to be there to peek him on this angle. So KZ gets on the windows. W7M make what is ultimately the correct call to push site direct. But G2 have also made the correct call to get back to site quicker. So we're going to have basically a 5v5 execute in about 10 seconds going in. They push into bathroom. One player push into bathroom. One player windows. One player in short. And KZ finds that first kill on Tualamau who was itching to try and actually take that land before W7M does. You've got Julio now holding the main stairs, and should he have continued to hold the main stairs, would have had a lot of success. And then the book on the roof. So bathroom control is established. That means by extension, W7M have gym. They do not fully know whether there are players in logistics. They basically only know the information on the right side of this line here. Any... Anywhere here, they do not have any info other than lines of sight. Benja finds Julio, and like I said, realistically, Julio should have just held that flank rather than trying to push up because he was aware that Benja was there. You know, it, it's a little bit of a, a mistake from Julio. He's actually allowed three players to now rotate up that main stairs. That means that somebody, and it's going to be this player on the breach, probably has to hold for Benja completely i think that's the book of vaults yeah and the rest of the players have to execute 3v3 flashes come in vaults has now actually seen as well he's seen a player leave towards main stairs so they know two are below or on main stairs kz knows that virtue is right in front of him and gets that kill Whew. doki picks up a life shot and i say a life shot He's actually tried to play off of his teammates, I believe. If we go back this five seconds. Now he runs down. He gets tagged, sees, and just peeks back up and gets the kill. Finds the kill. Now, it's important to note, actually, we can't see it on the on the replay file here. But there is a keeper by here that's trying to protect this. So Doki actually takes the player off the breach. So we've now got a 3v3 where two players are known to be mainstays or below. One player is unaccounted for. That one player is blur in logistics. He's holding the drop, playing as he should. Doki gets taken back out. So now you've got one player logistics, one player that was last known below. This is absolutely a this is absolutely a winnable round for W7M. And if you think about what they do and don't know. 
They do know Jim's clear. They know Bathroom's clear. They know that Master's clear because they're physically in there. They don't know if a player can be main stairs or main stairs platform. And they don't know if a player can be logistics. They know construction is probably clear because KZ's just got a just got a kill there. So the one remaining player is either one logistics or two cash side. And as you can see, that is completely why Herds is holding uh, holding logistics before the plant goes down. Finds that kill, and then Benja, who was you know has been below the whole round, will be below. Finds one gets traded back out and that will be 4-1 to w7m with a good i would say just a good read on the round and they were just faster to the punch than g2 were panic stations has hit g2 this round and um they've gone back to church arsenal for the fourth time now it's very hard to say whether this is a roam whether this is a turtle whether what's going on so if we look at the reinforcements We've got two reinforcements dirt tunnel side. We have got one reinforcement currently being put up in church. No reinforcements to blue. There is only one reinforcement left. Now this is going to become apparent why this is a curious in a second. All three hatches are reinforced. Jacuzzi wall is reinforced. But CCTV wall is only single reinforced. Now, I don't know if this is a roam a false roam a i think this is maybe a scramble together strategy on the fly by g2 where they've maybe called you know at least show some presence top floor obviously they turtled the last time that they defended this bomb site and they were beaten in spectacular fashion actually uh with a flawless round and the first two times on this bomb site they roamed so actually i think they're just trying to scramble something together um to basically try and throw w7m off i think they felt that w7m had a good read into how they were going to play it so doki is up on the top floor with his army so it looks like he's going to do some presence now g2 i guess want to want to roam but actually want to get back to site so get the reinforcements upstairs show some presence but get themselves back to site very quickly they want ideally i think the outcome of this to be the W7M play fast into them whilst they're all turtling. That's how it looks right now. Benjamaster's up on the top floor playing some cap cam. Virtue's in church. Blur's in armory. And I think the big giveaway that actually it's the it's going to be a, at the end, it's going to be some kind of turtle strategy, is the fact that Blur's on smoke. When it was the Rome, it was Virtue that was on smoke and Blur was out and about on the castle. So, and then you've got Alamal playing out in bathroom. For W7M, what do they know? They've got a drone in garage. They know that probably Doki is going to be in there. Julio's got a drone in spawn again. Herds' drone is dead, as you'd expect. Vault has got a drone in kitchen. And then JV's got a drone in garage. It's very similar, very same from W7M. All this is about is W7M getting a good read into what G2 are actually trying to do. And then executing it. Now, that final reinforcement is just about to be used by Virtue. So, the CCTV wall will stay soft. And again, this is G2 using too many, you know, wanting to do both at the same time. So the big thing for me is where did the G2 players go? Do they stay or do they go? Because you've got two up on the top floor, a two on the mid floor, and one onto site. And that's what I'm interested in is how quickly these players get back to site. And that will be the win condition for G2. I think actually this false row may well just about work. Virtue finds a kill onto JV. Where's this happened? Garage. It's a main door. So Virtue's lurking up on the mid floor. Ends up netting him a kill. That's also the Maverick off the board. Now, obviously, G2 are no longer using the Kaid. This is probably the first one they haven't. And it looks actually like W7M wants to full clear this. So this should be a great indication. This trigger moment now. Virtue getting a kill. This wall being opened. Should be an indication for... Is that Doki on the main stairs? To get himself down. And then for Benja to maybe stay and rat. Or to get himself down as well. Doki will see that the main stairs window is going to be opened. He should use that as an indication. Get yourself away. Get yourself down. G2 actually really want to fight this. And again, W7M, they've been sloppy. 
JV's been sloppy, exposing himself to main stair, uh, to main door. Herds has been even sloppier by just walking in kitchen whilst not knowing. Whilst not knowing what is clear, what is not clear, there is only a drone at his feet that JV was on. But he's gone in by himself. The doorway is not even open to kitchen hall. Not exactly sure what W7M are trying to play for. Because again, they're now taking a, a lot of risks up on the top floor. You're seeing Julio's just having to force his way in. Sorry, Julio's drone in 4KZ. They're just trying to pick up the pace, trying to find a kill back. They don't know Benja's up on the top floor. Benja's actually going to find a lot of success should he make the move quickly. One player is in logistics, and it looks like Benja... Oh, he doesn't quite pick him up. Just takes some pop shots at him. Puts him down to 10 HP and can leave should he want to. For W7M again, this is this is a round where W7M have not gone through the processes at all that they would want to have gone through. Um, and they're trying to recover this round because of sloppiness, ultimately. Um, they've lost two breaches. They've only got Julio, which means they've got one more breach in them, wherever that may be. And they've just got to try and fight and recover the round. Now, for G2's purposes, they've got themselves back on site. They can wait, they can wait, they can wait. They can also play key locations under the hatches. Note the two locations that they're playing. One under kitchen hatch, two under motor hatch. At least one, probably both of these locations, are going to be staying in control of G2, which means motor's in control of G2 and armor is in control of G2. That's important because it means you can have crossfires all over the place on any of the entrances. Obviously, there's the main stairs entrance, there's the dactyl entrance, there's the blue entrance. Either way, either way, and if I pause it here, this player can hold blue alongside this player. This player can also hold main stairs alongside any, basically, anybody. Alongside this player. And then, obviously, you've also got a triangle for the entrance too. You've got all of the entrances covered with at least two angles. That's why killing these breaches is so important. And that's why it was so sloppy for W7M. Now, we're going to see KZ try and make a play. Julio's used his use his one breach on the stock hatch just to allow, try and allow KZ to make a play in on that Dokubi. There is one call, there is a little bit of opportunity, but you would expect from G2 perspective that somebody inside church can stop this from happening. If you look at the G2 angles that they're holding, Doki's got an angle towards oil pit. Virtue's looking, using the shield in that position that we said that he should have been in the first couple of rounds, Blair is also looking towards blue, and Alamau is also focusing blue. G2 are completely aware that this attack can only come in from one angle, and have now created a double-double crossfire, if that makes sense. Two players, two players, crossfire in this, crossfire in this. It is very likely that the main stairs cam is also up. So, to that extent, they know that they have killed... G2 know they have killed Habana. They know that they have killed Maverick. They know that both Fermites have been used because they know the top floor Fermite was used and they know that the stock hatch was opened. And then that only leaves Ace. Now, if a team is running a four hard breach, I would say G2, that's a very fair assumption to make that Dirt Tunnel is closed. And that's why these players here can just show their back to Dirt Tunnel. Nobody is coming from Dirt Tunnel, not one player. Now, W7M, they need to figure out a way of backstabbing because if you, you could throw a blanket over all these guys. They're so in cl such close proximity to each other all walking into a crossfire it's not going to work somebody somewhere needs to find an opening now that's either oil pit to come down and try and take a 1v1 fight with this guy or that's main stairs to try and walk your way in through any of those angles it is still potentially winnable for w7m but g2 have got themselves in a really good scenario here kz's got obviously got themselves established bottom blue Julio goes with him. Doesn't go with him. He's now actually going to leave. And this is what W7M need to do. Where did Volps pick up that kill? Where is Volps? Volps got to Oil Pit and found the kill. So, yeah. We said that there might need to be two people. Volps has dropped and found a great kill. Let's watch that from his perspective, actually. Virtue's tried to... Tried to move out. I say move out of position. Virtue shield's gone. Um, 
but he maybe could have just crouched down and got behind a box rather than stood out. He's been deleted because of it. So now it's all about where Julio realistically can go because two players are known to be blue. And it's about where this rotation can come. Julio's the key to this whole attack for W7M, this whole recovery. But there's 24 seconds left and Julio has got to force. He has absolutely got to force mainstairs. That's the only option that he's got. I don't know where he's running to. He runs out, he runs back, and he's going to come and drop in blue at some point. 15 seconds left. So G2 know at this point, W7M have to force their way through the checkpoint. At least these two players. They take a gamble. They don't know whether mainstairs is being taken or not. They don't know where Julio is. And realistically, Julio should have gone the mainstairs, but he doesn't. KZ walks into sight and gets the kill onto Alamal. Massive play. At this point, the two church players, to an extent, have let the Arsenal players down because that angle there, that crossfire there that we talked about, should have been held. That crossfire, because the positions was, if we go all the way back, the position was here and here, holding to there and there. That should have been two kills for G2. In the end, it's actually ended up being two kills for W7M. They've recovered this round to a 3v2, but the one thing that they haven't done is considered, well, they have considered the time. They haven't been able to manage the time well to the point that there's 10 seconds left. Now, if we look at this scenario, what's the one thing that W7M are missing if they could have absolute, absolute control over this? What W7M would want is one player here, one player here. Because they knew that there was two in church, they knew that there was two in Arsenal quite early on in the round. So you would want that guy holding the long angle, so that can't be swung. And you'd want this guy holding this angle, so that can't be swung. As it is, they've got all three players stacked up on the blue side. They need to establish, as quickly as they can, somebody that can take a risky hold onto this long angle. Because if you're going to force a plant, which is what they're probably thinking right now in the 3v2, we can force this plant and hold it. You need somebody to be able to hold it. Plant starts going down. They try and force somebody close. And as you can see, Blur takes a massive shotgun kill onto Volps. One's plant in. And the Fermite obviously of Julio, will get distracted by this player. We'll get distracted by him, and then we'll leave the opportunity for these army to come around and get the kill. That is exactly what happens. This army actually comes in and kills the guy blue, and then you play another ring around of Rosie. This army gets the third kill, and that is the round for G2. They nearly give it away, but they manage to just about recover it. And I will say it again, I feel like they recovered that round because... W7M didn't play it properly. Firstly, with losing the two breaches just through sloppy mistakes. And then secondly, the third breacher, Julio, stayed alive, but he didn't go and take this main stairs angle here that would have stopped, that would have absolutely stopped Doki swinging out. G2 are somewhat, in a sense, lucky to be 2-4 down going into the second half.